What is up guys? Welcome to the Militia Gaming Community. I'm Trigger and in this video we're going to go over the top five highest scoring drift cars in Need for Speed Heat. Not only are we going to rank them from five to one, but we're also going to go over how to build those cars. Let's go! The Militia Gaming Community and Dave Loves Games came together to create a community discord. If you'd like to join the discord, there's an invite link in the description down below. Alright guys, before I get into the top 5 list, I think it's important to note the drifting in Need for Speed Heat is very subjective. Your driver's skill is going to matter way more than the actual build of your car. Certain car builds, however, will allow certain maneuvers while drifting. So as your skill progresses and you can perform better maneuvers, then your build will need to progress also. So it's really up to the driver to be able to perform those maneuvers. And there's a small difference between these top five cars in terms of overall score. The bigger difference maker will be the way that you handle each of the cars. So with that said, you might score higher with a car that's lower on my list and vice versa. But for me, this is the order of my top five. And because skill level is such a big part of drifting, I've solicited the help of one of the best drifters I know, Pavel's S17. He has some of the most insane drift scores on his YouTube channel and has been super generous in sharing his builds with me. So I really implore you to go and follow and subscribe to his YouTube channel. The guy is absolutely amazing at drifting. So for these top five cars, I will have a pro build courtesy of Pavel's and a beginner build that I personally use. The pro build is meant for the manual transmission settings and is harder to control, but it's also more rewarding with points. And the beginner build is meant for an automatic transmission setting and is easier to control, but does not reward as many points. Personally, I run the automatic transmission setting, so that build is easier for me to score higher. I tried the pro build and I scored high, but not as high as my automatic transmission setting because I'm not physically capable of scoring higher using a manual transmission. That being said, let's go ahead and get into the builds and each of the cars on my list. At number five, I've got the Corvette Z06. Now you'll notice a couple of differences between the pro build and the beginner build. And one of those is the ultimate roots supercharger versus the ultimate dual turbo. Now, personally, I like the dual turbo because it doesn't provide that instant boost that you get with the roots supercharger. And I think you need that boost when you're using the pro build because the pro build really requires you to feather the throttle a lot more. You have to be able to control your throttle if you're using that pro build. Now with the beginner build, you can just smash the gas and slide the car from left to right and control it just fine. But with a pro build, using a manual transmission is really important, like I said, to have that throttle control. And the Root Supercharger doesn't have any type of turbo lag or anything like that. It is instant power. And that's just one of the differences between these builds. You can see there's a few others when it comes to tires and the differential. All right, moving on to number four, I've got the Nissan 350Z. Now the 350Z really does a great job of swinging back and forth. I really like the amount of control that you have with this car versus other cars that didn't make it into the top five. During my testing, I scored this car a little bit higher than the Corvette because it found it easier to control and the scores that resulted with that control were a little bit higher. Also, the 350Z comes in clutch with the style points. I mean, this car looks amazing and the customization options you get with this car are super high. That doesn't rank it higher than the Corvette. It really ranks higher than the Corvette because I was able to get higher scores in general. But I think this car looks amazing and it's really fun to customize this car so it takes the number four spot on my list at number three i've got the volvo 242 dl this car was very unexpected for me but because it's a rear wheel drive car it has the ability to drift really really well but that doesn't go for all of the rear wheel drive cars in this game. This car is definitely special and it deserves a place in the top five. I was able to score over 220 
on the drift section that was inside the racetrack. This thing really does a great job at moving from side to side without picking up too much speed. If you pick up too much speed while you're drifting, you end up taking up a lot of track and not scoring a lot of points. So this car really does a great job at limiting its speed. At number two, I've got the Nissan Fairlady 240Z. Again, style points are everything with this car. It's very customizable. It's something that looks amazing and has such a strong history with the drift culture. You'll notice a big difference between the two builds, and that is the tires. The tires have a huge effect on the way the car feels, the way the car drifts. In the beginner build, you're looking at drag tires. The slide pattern is more sustainable. It's easier for someone with less skill to sustain a slide with drag tires than it is with speed cross tires. Speed cross tires offer a little bit more precision. They slide faster and you need to really have a strong sense of your throttle control and your steering control when you're using speed cross tires. And you'll notice that's a big difference between these two builds and really every build that's on my list. And at number one, and this is not gonna be a surprise for most of you, the RX-7. This car, for whatever reason, scores higher than every other car in the game, and it's almost like regardless of the build. Like, you definitely need a good drift build in order to make this work, but it scores really, really high, and it has something to do with the drift angle that you can get every single time you swing this car around. It's got great turning radius, so you can swing a super steep angle and then swing it right back the other way. I mean, this thing really does a great job at drifting and scores insanely high, way higher than every other car that I've tested. So I recommend the RX-7 number one for points. And I think most of the drifters out there would agree the RX-7 is definitely the highest scoring car in the game when you master how to drive it. Now that being said, all of these cars can score super high. I mean, depending on your skill level and what type of handling you really like in a car, you might be able to score just as high with the Corvette Z06. But the RX-7 is definitely being used by most of the pro drifters in this game. All of the records are being set by the RX-7. So there's a reason why all of these people are using that car as the record setting car. And it's because it really does score higher than every other car in the game. Now the cars that we've put in two through five are very debatable. You could move them around and make them a different order. But I really believe the RX-7 is the king of drifting in this game. And the other cars are sort of interchangeable depending on your skill level and the way you like to see the car handle. So like I said in the beginning, you might score higher with a car that might be lower on my list, or you might score lower with a car that might be higher on my list. It really just depends on what you feel is best for your skill level. So try these five cars, try the pro build first, see if you can master that build with a manual transmission, and then go back if you can't, and go to the beginner build with an automatic transmission, and really try to master that instead. You'll end up getting the hang of things, and as your skill level progresses, you may wanna move into the pro build, and then try to go for some insanely high scores. Now, if you're just in this to three star all of the drift events around the map, because you're trying to get that platinum trophy or you're trying to get all of the achievements in the game that's fine any of these cars will do it and any of these cars with either builds will help you achieve that because it's definitely possible to three star all of the drift events in my game before i came up with this list i used the evo 9 with a completely different build so it's definitely possible and these five cars will make it that much easier because they score the highest in the game and there you have it guys, that's my top five highest scoring drift cars. If you have any questions about this video or any video, you can send me a DM on Instagram or Twitter. I check them regularly. I will get back to you as soon as I can on that. And thank you to everyone who has tuned in and all of the Militia subs who keep coming back for more. You guys are literally the greatest. I'll catch you on the next one. Trigger out.